Hey guys, what's going on? It's Nock. Welcome along to the Singapore Grand Prix round number 14 of the World Drivers Championship here. And um, before we head into the Grand Prix, we got to do an invitational event in this Ferrari around Bahrain. And our target was to do 10 overtakes. And um, it was pretty easy, to be honest. Just whack the car up to rich fuel mix and um, had some fun. It, it's always nice because obviously the AI cars are a lot slower than um, your car anyway. But it is definitely nice just to have a bit of fun away from like the competitiveness of the track and um, the pressure of the championship, and you know just throw a car around a circuit and drive it at you know at its absolute limits, um, basically. Um, so yeah, as you can see, I'm just kind of clipped up the overtakes. I decided to throw them in at the Grand Prix now rather than doing separate uh, videos for them because uh, I don't really think that you know a three or four minute video of these things is probably you know that's uh, interesting to people so um yeah probably the best overtake just two people into turn one right there to, to get our temp position but uh, yeah i'll be throwing them in with uh, races in career mode videos from now on guys so make sure you um stay tuned for them as we come up and do our final overtake i was pushing to get this 12th one here but we just couldn't quite make it into um the final sector of the racetrack here with only two seconds to go try to go around the outside but just didn't have enough time just to get any power down and um, cement the place but um, yeah it was good all in all we got um, 11 overtakes which um, smashed our target but um, anyway without further ado let's jump into practice for the Singapore Grand Prix and uh, straight onto the track acclimatization test uh, where we scored a 505 a green so um, yeah, this is a track I kind of struggled at in previous games, so I don't know how I'm going to run here, to, if I'm completely honest. This was the um, race pace simulation, but I wasn't improving on my third one, and the, uh, I think the weather was changing or something, so I just dived into the pits, and we got uh, a green for the race pace. Onto the tyre wear, and we managed to hit it in the purple, as we do with most tracks. Nice purple tyre wear right there. And... Um, now we are on to something which didn't go very well at all, as you can see. This was the first of two crashes that we actually had. Um, that was the end of uh, P2. On to P3, though. And this was the fuel saving. And um, this was the other crash we had in P3. So, um, yeah, kind of bizarre. We just kind of went straight on. And that was that. And that was the end of practice, guys. So, moving on to qualifying. And because of those incidents, I didn't really feel very confident that the race was going to go very well for us, or qualifying was going to go very well for us. So I was going to take this opportunity to take some brand new edging components and start this race at the back of the grid. And um, in the hope that, you know, we can pick up some scraps in the first few laps and maybe make some places. Um, like I said, Singapore is a, is a funny old track for me. Um, this is the corner at the end of Sector 2 in this game I find is like the hardest corner because the apex seems to blend in so much with the Arnco. It's so hard to spot and I've had no end of trouble through that with the weekend. Anyway, this is Q1. On my first run we set a 1.45.1 which puts us in third right at the beginning of the session. But then we go back out a little bit later on lap 2 and get a 1.44.8 which pushes us up to P5. Moving on to Q2. I think we only did one run in Q2. And it was a 144.6, but that was enough to see us through to Q3. So uh, I was pretty happy with that. But Q3 was a wet session, unfortunately. So, um, yeah, we was really, really struggling. First lap was a 2 minute 14.3 on the intermediate tyres. Um, not really raced around here in the wet, but we did get a chance right at the end of the session to get another lap put in. And we did improve quite substantially by nearly 10 seconds there. But in the end, it was only good enough to put us in P10. So, with our grid penalties, we're going to start side last. Let's head over to the grid. Take a look at how the cars line up. Kimi Raikkonen's perfect lap yesterday sees him start from pole position. And Lewis Hamilton completes the front row. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Bottas, Ricardo, Max Verstappen, and Massa, Perez, Grosjean, Hülkenberg, and Fernando Alonso, Sainz, Ocon, Sebastian Vettel, and Kvyat, Stroll, Palmer, Stoffel van Dorn, and Pascal Wehrlein. Ericsson and a Haas rounds off the grid. Now it's almost time to lights out, so let's go down to the track. You were expected to be in a higher grid position than this. Let's push hard on the first few laps and move up a few places. So if I'm completely honest, qualifying kind of took me by surprise. I wasn't expecting to have so much pace in qualifying and do so well, which is why I took the um, 
engine penalties and got some new um, engine units for myself for um, the latter part of the season. But um, hey ho, we're at the back of the grid as we end the formation lap here and line up on the grid, and uh, we'll just see what we can do. Uh, hopefully, you know, a decision here will make us better in future races. Um, but uh, we'll see where we can go from the back of the grid here on the Singapore Grand Prix as the lights come on. It's five light lights and we are racing. So, nice to get away from the line as we pull alongside Ericsson in the Sauber. And um, I think we're going to try and be a bit conservative here. don't want to go too aggressive in here and just ruin the race in the first corner as we switch back to the inside to go round the outside of Verline and Van Dorm to go up to P17. Now heading into the next corner, we take a lunge down the inside, and that was a, I don't really know what went on there, I kind of went for it, backed out, and then went in again, but uh, we'll see again in the replay in a moment, um, after this first lap has shaken out, just um, what sort of went on, but um, yeah, first four corners, and we are up to P15, but um, there is quite a gap at the moment to us and Stroll, which... Um, it's quite worrying, but also quite nice because it just gives us a bit of breathing space and allows us to start and try and settle into a rhythm, find a groove, and um, keeping an eye on the uh, barriers, trying to stay away from them. And, um, you know, it's a long race. This is the Singapore Grand Prix, the longest one on the calendar. Um, we've got 15 laps to go around here, so we don't just want to waste it all on the first lap as we try and go out wide here. Uh, at the end of the Anderson Bridge to get a better exit, but um, didn't really make that many inroads. But um, we are quite coming up quite nicely to stroll, think about a move, and then decide against it. This, I think, is the hardest corner here because of the way the barriers are coloured and the curb is coloured. Um, it's really hard to spot the apex I've, I found, and that was um, the one corner I was really struggling with for the majority of the weekend. Um, but as we come through to the underneath the grandstand section here to um, almost bring the first lap to a close we are still on the back of Lance Stroll here um, you know not right up his uh, diffuser by any means but um, we're keeping with him and um, it's like Palmer has got behind in front of the Toro Rosso that was uh, behind us so uh, first lap made up five places and uh, just trying to find the groove now as lap two into turn one we kind of broke broke a bit late thinking we might get a move on stroll but um yeah no we just compromised that entry and exit so um we are all the way on the back of him here are we going to take a dive down the inside yes we are we leave him the space on the outside but we've gone on the power a little bit too early the back end has stepped out and that has allowed lance stroll to stay at the side of us we're going side by side down here into the next corner towards the end of sector one who's going to come out on top we break really early leave enough space for Lance Stroll because I know he's there and um, just allows him to come back so um, unfortunately we lost place take another dive down the inside leave him the space though and um, just not able to take the place um, and then that happened and when I was racing this at the time I was dead certain that I got tagged from behind and that caused me to spin but um, absolute disaster we have Pretty much lost our front wing. Uh, we're going to have to limp back to the pits, and we are now dead last in the Singapore Grand Prix. As we take a look, another look at the start here. Everyone gets away pretty cleanly. Like I said, I just took a conservative start. I didn't want to dive in too much, as we um, just take nice and slowly on the court, on the apex, and um, we just swing it out a bit more to the inside to take those three places into turn two. And then let's look at this incident with um, Palmer again. I just kind of, I don't know, from his on board, it just looks like I come steaming in. Um, he gets tangled up with the Toro Rosso there on the uh, outside, and uh, I apologise. That could have been my fault, so I do apologise for that instance. And that was the move again on Lance Stroll on lap two, as we take a look on board with Lance Stroll here, as you can see. Dive down the inside, but just getting that twitchy back end just didn't give us the traction on the exit, unfortunately, and that allowed him here to regain the place um, so some good racing there and now we're on board with um, Palmer and we'll see that incident and as you'll see Palmer was actually nowhere near me when I had that moment and um, if we look closely here what you'll actually see is it seems that I just lost the, the back end again and I, I clip brushed the wall with my front and rear tire I think and that just get, unsettled the back end put me in a spin and um, back of the field, unfortunately. So it was uh, a limp back to the pits and um, for a set of super soft tyres and a brand new front nose. But um, yeah, after 
showing promising pace in qualifying um, and at the beginning of the race I thought we, we you know we got away well it's it's kind of all gone away from us now so I think what this is going to be is just a case of um, settling down we're going to be on our own for quite a while now and just pump in some good lap times hope that um, some people in front of us are squabbling uh, people in front of us their tires are going off and um, who knows like I say it's a long way we're only on lap three here but um, we may be able to claw something back and um, I think point scoring finish date is going to be out of the question for sure but um, just need to settle down get our head down pump in some good lap times and um, see where we end up towards the end of the race so a little bit later in the race, this is lap six, and uh, Stoffel van Dorm has retired. He is out of the race, and that has prompted a virtual safety car. Um, not really sure what happened, but um, as we come down the start finish straight here, if you look straight ahead um, in sort of like the runoff area in front of us, you'll see that his car is right there for us. So, um, yeah, not for us, but he's off the track. Sorry, I got distracted by my phone. Uh, so, yeah, that was the virtual safety car period, which um, kind of neutralized the race, which wasn't going to help us catch uh, any of the cars or the pack in front of us. But it didn't last too long. And um, you can see there, we was a little bit cheeky on our Delta as this virtual safety car was ending. But, you know, any advantage we can get here, I really need to try and take as um, the other car's just gone through the hairpin at the end of the Anderson Bridge there. So, um, you know, we're not a million miles away. Uh, a few pit stops and some good laps as we lock up there. Um, should see us back on the back of the pack. End of lap eight. And uh, I think we've got Pascal Verline here. He's making his uh, one and only stop. So that actually promotes us up to P18. And you'll see we're a bit close to the cars in front as well. It looks like we're making some good inroads on them. They've made their stop. Um, but uh, yeah, we're not a million miles away, so um, you know, keep this pace up, keep our head down, keep out of trouble, and um, it will nicely come back to us. Palmer's in the pits on lap uh, end of lap nine, beginning of lap ten, so that promotes us up to P17. Then. Um, End of lap 10 here, we had a very, very scruffy exit over the start finish straight. And, I'm, and honestly, I don't know what happened here. I just, I just don't know. I just couldn't get the car slowed down. We were over the curb. That caused us to spin. And um, yeah, unfortunately, that is another new nose for us. So uh, we let Palmer go through here. Uh, so there's no point trying to race him. Uh, we, we're not going to be able to keep, keep tabs with him at all. But uh, we see on the replay a really scruffy exit as we um, head over the start-finish line there. And um, okay, let's just look at this again. Kind of caught the curb on the inside, caught the curb on the outside, and that just sent us into a spin. We just had too much um, power down at that point in the Grand Prix. But uh, for later on on that lap, and that dreaded car, I just couldn't get the car slowed down. And um, yeah, I drove into the wall. And it was at that point I said, you know what, I'm just going to park the car. I'm going to pull the car to the side of the track. And retire. This has just been an absolutely dreadful race for me. Um, there's no real point in carrying on, unfortunately. So, yeah, we retired from the race. So, that is us finishing the Singapore Grand Prix in 19th place. Not really sure what the AI was doing here, but he, they, they made an absolute butchery of trying to get the car out here. Just like kept trying to turn and smashing into the wall and different bits and pieces. But, yeah, just look at that again. Um, it was that troublesome corner, but I know there was lack of downforce. We just could not turn the car in. It just understeered so much. And um, as I tried to recover and turn the car to carry on, I just didn't have enough turn. And um, yeah, fortunately, that was the end of our Singapore Grand Prix. So Kimi Raikkonen takes home the spoils and finishes in first place with 25 points for the Scuderia. Valtteri Bottas and Lewis Hamilton make it a Mercedes 2 and 3 with Max Verstappen, Sebastian Vettel, Daniel Ricciardo finishing the top six. Our teammate Roman Grosjean had a good race. He finished in ninth position. Moving on to the driver's standings, and um, nobody really made any gains or losses. So Lewis Hamilton still remains at the top with a nine-point lead over Kimi Raikkonen. And Valtteri Bottas is in third. We remain in seventh place. However, we have lost some points to our teammates um, as he gains two, place, two points sorry, for his ninth place finish. 
It's also as you were in the constructors with nobody moving up or down. Um, so yeah, just people really strengthening their positions and um, staying where they are. So it's so good that even after this poor performance, we are still the fourth fastest team uh, this so far this season in the constructors. Guys, thank you very much for watching. If you're new to the channel, please like and subscribe for more videos. Uh, we'll be back real soon with the Malaysian Grand Prix. But until then, next time, I've been Nock. You've been awesome. Happy gaming.